Yes, hello everyone. Um, we'll conclude our discussion on uh, object orientations and the limits of abstract data types and the fundamental concepts in object oriented languages with uh, some brief implementation aspects. So, um, remember we mentioned this earlier that an object can be represented as if it were a record with as many fields as there are variables in the class of which it is an instance in addition to all those appearing in its superclasses. And this representation also contains a pointer to the descriptor of the class of which it, it, it is an instance. So what do we mean by this? If we jump to this uh, figure here, we have a class A here that has an instance variable uh, with the name A. And then we have the class B which extends A. So class B is a subclass of A. Uh, and it has an instance variable B. So obviously uh, B inherits the instance variable a from class a and uh, so if we represent the object o here which is of type b as a as a record then we have the instance variables inside that record a is the instance variable that is basically being inherited from the superclass A, and B is the instance variable that is uh, defined in class B. And in, uh, in addition, we have a pointer to the class descriptor. So we have a pointer from the in, uh, instance uh, B, instance O, as it's called here, to the class B because that's the descriptor for this object. So this is what we mean when we're saying that an object can be represented as if it were a record with as many fields as there are variables in the class. So we saw the variable A there and we saw the variable B and the representation also contains a pointer to the descriptor of the class. Now how are the classes uh, implemented, uh, well, the sim we, we might say that the simplest, uh, simplest implementation is the one which represents the class hierarchy using a linked list. So each node in the list represents a class and contains pointers to the implementation of the methods that are either defined or redefined in the class. And then the nodes are linked using a pointer from which points from the subclass to the immediate superclass. So if you go back to our picture here, we have the class descriptor here. And we have a pointer from class B to class A because class B is a subclass of class A. Class A is a superclass of class B. And then inside the class descriptor, we have a pointer to the corresponding code. So have, we have a pointer to the code for F, we have a pointer to the code for H. And in the class A, we have something similar. We have a pointer to the code for F, and we have a pointer to the code for G. And notice that uh, the function F, or the method F, has been redefined in class B, and therefore the we are talking about uh, two different uh, methods here. The one being defined in class B and the one being defined in class A. So what happens is when, when a method M of an object O, uh, which is an instance of class C, is invoked, the pointer stored in O is used to access the descriptor of C and determine whether C contains an implementation of this method M. Once again, our picture, when we 
try to invoke uh, a given method in uh, by sending a, a message to this object O, the pointer in the object itself to uh, its class descriptor can be used to find out whether the method exists in the class or not. If the method exists in the class, we have a pointer to the code for it. If it doesn't, we can use the, the link from the or the pointer from the subclass to the superclass and search in the superclass instead. So if it doesn't, if, if the method does not exist in, in uh, class C here, the pointer is set to the superclass and the procedure is repeated. And this approach is, for example, used in Smalltalk. Um, The problem is that it's a little bit inefficient because every method in invocation requires a linear scan of the class hier hierarchy. So we, what we have to do is we search in the in the uh, corresponding class uh, to which the object belongs. If if the method does not <coughs> exist there, we search in the superclass. If the, if the method does not exist there, we search in the superclass of the superclass and so on. So there's a linear scan of the class hierarchy that takes place at uh, runtime. Now, uh, let's talk a, a little bit about what happens when we execute a method. Uh, well, executing a method is actually similar to executing a function in general. So here we're talking about member functions, methods that are be that belong to a certain classes or to a certain class. Uh, so what happens is that an activation record for the method's local variables and the parameters and all the other information that we have been talking about with regard to activation records is pushed onto the stack. So that's nothing new here. But what is new is that unlike a general function, a method must also access the instance variables of the object on which it is called. Because a method belongs to an object and the method is usually um, uh, uh, accessing or has to ac ha have access to the instance variables of the object because it's for example changing the values of the instance variables. Now the identity of the object is not known at compile time because in general that is not the case because we might be sending uh, an object which is of uh, um, type uh, subclass or of the type superclass. So we don't know exactly what type, what exact type of, uh, of the object we will be handling at runtime. But the structure of such an object is known. It, it depends on the class, and therefore the offset of every instance variable in an object representation is known at compile time, meaning it is statically, statically known. So if we go back to our picture, uh, here for our object O, which is of type B, the structure of the object is known at uh, compile time, meaning that it has an instance variable A that it inherits from class A, and then it has its own instance variable B, which is defined in B. So the structure of this object is known. First comes the, come the instance variable from the superclass, and then come the instance variable from the subclass. So even though we don't know exactly whether we will be uh, handling uh, an object of type B or an object of type A at runtime, we know uh, 
what the structure of the object is. So uh, remember also that when we call a method that belongs to some object, a pointer to the object which received the method is passed as a parameter. So when we execute the body of the method, this pointer is the method's this. Remember, we talked about this earlier that there was a, a specific pointer that is called this. Let me see if I can find that again. Like here in this uh, definition of the increment function. This is really a reference to the current object. So this is a pointer that r refers to the current object. Uh, so during the execution of the method, every access to an instance variable uses the offset from this pointer. So this is a pointer that points to the object in question. And then when we try when the method tries to access an instance variable, it, it can use the offset uh, from, from this pointer. So if you recall what's done when we have local variables inside functions, uh, those are accessed using an off offset from a pointer to the activation record. So it's a similar idea. Instead of having an offset that points to the activation record, we have, sorry, instead of having a pointer uh, or an offset from a pointer into the activation record, we have uh, an offset from a pointer to the object itself. So if we go back to our figure here, if uh, a method is uh, uh, manipulating or, or uh, let's say if a method is being run on an object of type class A and that method needs to refer to the instance variable A then that instance variable is in the first section or first um, uh, memory uh, location uh, from the from the start of the object. Remember the this pointer points to the object itself. Then we can imagine that in the first memory location the instance variable a is stored. Uh, if that method is uh, belongs to class B and it needs to access the instance variable B, lowercase b, then that instance variable is in location number two uh, from the offset of this pointer. So because the structure of the a record is known at compile time, uh, the compiler can generate code that uses the offset from the pointer to this object to get access to the corresponding instance variables. Now we, we said earlier that one possible implementation was to have a pointer to from the object to the class descriptor and then from the subclass to the superclass and then from the superclass to the superclass of the superclass and so on. So basically when we were doing the search we uh, were doing linear scan of the class hierarchy. Now there are more efficient implementations. So if we have for example a static type system, then the method selection uh, requires 
constant time. We can come up with an implementation such that the method selection requires constant time. So if notice that if uh, types are static, meaning that they are known at compile time, the set of methods that any object can invoke is known at compile time. And we can keep the list of these methods uh, in, the, in the class descriptor. So the list contains not just the methods that are explicitly defined or redefined in the class, uh, but also all the methods inherited from its superclasses. So we basically keep all the methods, uh, not only the ones that are defined or redefined in the class, but also all the methods inherited from uh, its superclasses. And following C++ terminology, we use this term vtable, which stands for virtual function table. Uh, so when we're referring to this kind of data structure, we call it uh, the vtable. Now that's what the literature uh, often does, the vtable. So what are we talking about here? Uh, each class definition has its own vtable. And all instances of the same class share the same virtual table, V table. So when a subclass B of the class A is defined, B's V table is generated by copying the one for A uh, and replacing all the methods that are redefined in B and adding the new methods that B defines uh, at the bottom. So let's look at the, uh, this example here, we have uh, class A, which has this instance variable E and another instance variable C, and then it defines uh, two functions G and F. Class B extends A, uh, it has its own instance variable A uh, and uh, instance variable B, and uh, uh, defines two functions h and f where f is redefined where f is redefined so if we look at the structure of the objects first the objects of class a we see that a has the instance variable lowercase a and the character c and uh, class b B has the instance uh, inherits the instance variables A and C from uh, class A and has its own instance variable A and B. So remember that a subclass has uh, in the record has a copy of the instance variables from uh, the superclass and then its own instance variables. Now then we have a pointer from the uh, records for the object to the uh, class descriptor. And uh, when we're t what we're talking about here is a pointer to this V table, this virtual table. So the A object, in the record for the A object, there is a pointer to the V table for A. In the record for the B object, there is a pointer to the V table for B. And what is kept inside this table? Well, if we look at the vtable for A, we see uh, the functions G and F. And notice that uh, this, is, this is really a pointer to the code for the functions G and F. Now, when the, the vtable for B is constructed, it is really a copy of the vtable for A. But in addition, it has its own functions like H, because H does not exist in A, and F, if in this case, F is redefined. So that's when you redefine the function, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different code. The, the body in the function is different from the one that is in the parent. 
So this is the way it uh, looks like when we have these uh, v-tables. So, as I said, if B is a subclass of A, B's virtual table contains a copy of A's v-table as its initial part. So if you look at it here, for example, the G function, which is only defined in A, is also in the v-table for B. So in the initial part, we have uh, uh, same information. Uh, the v-table for A has also F, but it's redefined in the v-table for B. So, in th by, by doing this, uh, this implementation, it means that the method invocation costs only two indirect access, uh, accesses. The offset of every method in the v-table is known uh, at compile time. So, in order to get to a, the code for a function, we just uh, we have a pointer to the uh, to the record uh, itself, and then we can use the pointer to the uh, uh, to the to the class descriptor, and there we have the the function. Uh, we can statically uh, uh, compute the offset. So. For example, if uh, if a class, if an object of type B of class B uh, is executing a method uh, H, if we send the message H to an object of class B, then at compile time. Uh, the compiler can uh, calculate the offset uh, from the start of the v-table as being the third uh, uh, function defined in the v-table because the first two are, are defined in A uh, and the second one is actually redefined and the third one is the one that uh, will be called. So, for example, in the figure, when method f is invoked, the compiler computes an offset that remains the same whether f is invoked an object of class A or an object of class B. So, in this example here, we are uh, declaring a uh, pointer of type B. So, pb is basically a pointer to uh, an instance of... Uh, or is a reference to a, to an instance of class B. PA is a reference to an instance of uh, class A. And then we have assignment here which, which says AA, which is of type A, uh, uh, gets the value PP. So um, remember this is really subtyping. We are, ax we are, we are assigning a value of a subclass to a type or variable of type superclass. We are allowed to do that. And then we say aa.f. So we're sending the f message to uh, this object aa. And what object is aa? Well, it's a reference really to an object of type b, of class b. So, uh, but no matter what type of object AA refers to at, at, at runtime, the compiler will always associate the call to F to the second function from the offset of the pointer to the v-table. So if we are executing the method f that is defined in b, we are referring to the second function in the v-table for b. If we were calling a method that we were invoking a method in class a, it, was, it would also be the second function 
that is defined in the V table for A. So this particular implementation allows us to uh, access the implementation for methods in a constant time as opposed to a linear scan as we had in the earlier example which is the case for small talk for example so what we had been looking at here is an implementation that is used in C++